Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. Those of you coming back to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name of Yahweh Shai. All right, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem, in the name of Rahakwadash. All right, the Spirit Holy or the Holy Spirit that has been sent to the servants of Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai in these latter days to preach, prophesy unto those, all right, who through the Holy Spirit have ears to hear and eyes to see, which are the remnant, all right, being gathered by the word. In preparation to be exodus out of Babylon the Great and entered into the Second Covenant. So I wanted to get into Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We always quote a few scriptures um, from this chapter, uh, but the Spirit told me to uh, go into the chapter in its entirety, and hopefully you brothers and sisters be edified. This is Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And as you can see here, Paul's apostolic ministry. All right. And the word apostle means to be sent. Okay. And Paul was a chosen vessel. Chosen to go and preach unto these various different churches where the Israelite foreigners or Gentiles or those who were raised as uh, Greeks, you know, uh, Romans who were likened unto heathen called uncircumcision by the circumcision Paul was a chosen vessel to go and preach to these various different churches to preach Yahweh Shai among the heathen okay among the heathen which is a narrative the whole Bible deals with as the chosen lineage the chosen seed would eventually via a curse be scattered among all of the heathen and learn their works all right which has been a thorn in the side of the chosen seed going all the way back to adam okay the sons of god even at the time we received the first covenant okay we eventually were commanded to take out all of the canaanites all right and these different heathen nations that were inhabiting the holy land and what did we do we got amongst them and didn't obey the Heavenly Father's order and eventually started worshiping their idols, their gods. This has been a narrative with the chosen seed, all right, amongst the whole volume of the book. Even our King Solomon, you know, as he became king, eventually fell to the idols of heathen via making marriages with heathen women. As heathen women are supposed to ultimately be concubines, Solomon made marriages with them and eventually gave in to their demands to build these high places, you know, where all manner of evil and debauchery and child sacrifice and madness was going on. All right. So much that he fell and the Lord rent the kingdom. And since then, you know, the, uh, 12 tribes of Israel have been split, rent, you know, um, and we've went into these various different captivities. Now, when you read about the Apostle Paul, okay, he comes in during a time as we're in the Roman captivity, the fourth beast. And by this time, you have many, many Israelites who have fell away to the Greco-Roman customs going back to the book of Maccabees. You know, um, actually, when you look it up where Paul was born, uh, Tarsus, if you go into the history, Antiochus uh, Epiphanes, who was around in the book of Maccabees, the one who, you know, was responsible for coming hard with the Hellenization of the, you know, the heathen and the Jews as well. Um, Tarsus was one of his strongholds. Okay, he, he he raised hell in Tarshish when you read about Antiochus. So Paul is very well familiar 
with, you know, um, speaking the Greek, you know, speaking Latin, speaking Hebrew. Um, and the Lord chose him as a vessel to eventually be sent, you know, as before he was a follower of Yahweh Shai, he was amongst the circumcision and he looked down and even put to death followers of Yahweh Shai because he looked at them as sellouts. Okay. He looked at them as, you know, compromising the gospel, the doctrine. All right. But he was knocked off of his uh, horse, blinded, and eventually woke up to the truth. So Apostle Paul's ministry is very, very important because it's his ministry that ultimately opened up salvation unto the Gentiles which are Israelites who were scattered amongst all of these various different nations who were brought in via faith, you see? And for him to preach this at that time in that atmosphere where he was, you know, being raised as a Pharisee, being raised amongst the circumcision, you know, that was a hardcore act of faith. He himself was even stoned, constantly persecuted, he called all kinds of hell for the gospel of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And even until this day, people stumble at his writings. Okay, as Peter told you, <laughs> you know, many would stumble at his writings to their own destruction. You know, whether it be the Christian church or even a lot of Hebrew Israelites, they stumble at Paul's writings. All right, which he was taught by Hamashiach Yahweh himself. So let's go ahead and get into uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And the first verse, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we've received mercy, we faint not. And the Heavenly Father, sure, sure enough, had mercy on us by giving us this ministry. All right. As we're out ministering the new covenant. Okay. Preaching and prophesying unto our people of what is to come. You see, and for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And as we have this ministry, as we go out and preach, as Paul went out and preached, he was met with much opposition. You see, persecuted, imprisoned, <laughs> you know, lied on, brought to trial, shipwrecked, stoned, and many other things. But guess what? He didn't faint. See, he fought the good fight. It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. And you have to come to this thing with a pure heart. Okay, the simplicity in Yahweh Shai is needed. Okay, to ward off pride, ego, and many other things that come with this flesh. You see, and it's through fear of the Lord that you're able to ward those things off. It starts with the fear of Yahweh Bashim Shai. When you fear the Lord, okay, you renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, knowing that the angels are watching you. So you have to come correct. Now, in this flesh, you're prone and privy, you know, to demons jumping on you. All right, but you got to know when a demon is a demon. You got to know when to stop. You got to know when to ask for prayer. You got to know when to rebuke yourself. You got to know when to judge yourself that you be not judged with this world. You see, and as many individuals walking in dishonesty, forwarding their belly as the gospel, okay, heaping up a bunch of meaningless individuals who really don't care about the gospel, who really don't believe the truth for what it is, okay, but are just mere weirdos wiggling around comment boards, going from comment board to comment board, all right, looking for some rebellion or something, all right, as the scriptures say, um, they show uh, he teaches unto themselves having itching ears. And you have men that, 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 you know, play off of that. See? It says, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully, you see, and many men are doing that, and it's been coming out. 
that you have individuals who talk about the law, but when you go into the law, they're ashamed of the law. You got people who talk about, you know, uh, they're down, you know, they're followers of Yahweh Shai, but they do things 100% contrary to the simplicity in Yahweh Shai. Boasting and forward in themselves, doing what the hell they want to do, handling the word of the Most High deceitfully, playing on Israel's emotions and thinking because they can get the support of the masses of Israel, which the masses of Israel ain't right. Using the mindset of the West and this world to come up against concepts of the Bible and to make the men of the Lord who are bringing out the truth look crazy. Okay. Let's read this in the NLT. One second here. It's kind of like impromptu. But we always go into this chapter, but uh, the Spirit's just on me to go into it. This is uh, the NLT. It says, we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. You got a lot of people with underhanded methods who are enemies of the cross. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of the Most High. All right, because we're mad and angry now, there's a new name in the heavens. And you have people who, who play on that. Okay. We tell the truth before the Most High and all who are honest know this. Okay, so we don't have any ulterior motives. We're just simply preaching the word of Yahweh Bashim Shai. So let's read this again. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully. Okay, uh, making uh, merchandise of men. Okay, but by the manifesting manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now, what gospel was he preaching? He was preaching the apostles' doctrine, the true gospel. Okay? And he's saying, if our gospel be hid, all right, and we believe, you know, uh, through faith, you know, that we're a part of the same body because the church of Yahweh Shai will be raised up here in the latter days. All right? So if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, which many of our people are lost. Many of our people don't really understand, you know, um, what they're a part of, what's happening. You know, they come in, you know, for the sake of, you know, whatever fun, you know, or thing to tickle, you know, the, you know, their, uh, or scratch their itch. What makes them feel good. But when you get into the truth of really what's going on and the truth of the gospel, you know, reincarnation, re, you know, which is regeneration, it's the same thing. How particular men that we read about, you know, in the Bible are back here today. You see how two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed, but eventually those spirits will, will will be able to see the kingdom and be all right. That's here to the majority of Israel. See? Our gospel is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So a lot of our people really, really, really have taken, you know, of the whole Christian doctrine, and it's hard for them to let go of those concepts they thought and believe when they were Christians, which when you were a Christian, you weren't hardcore into Christianity. You weren't going into the scriptures. You just heard things and they became a reality to you because it was just how you were raised. Like burning in hell forever. How does that work? Right? And a lot of Israelites are taken from these doctrines of the world and of the Christian church. And really they, they try to, you know, uh, sneak them into the true doctrine but see our gospel was hid to them that are lost because the god of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not okay when we try to go into the laws when we go into ancient customs all right the mass majority of israel can't get with it because the god of this world 
which is Satan, have blinded their minds. And the Heavenly Father wants that. Okay? As a matter of fact, let's get that scripture. This is the book of Matthew 13 and 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? See? And this, 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 uh, this word is written in parables, dark sayings, symbolisms. So only the spiritual can enter into the true understanding of it. Okay? And you listen to a lot of the arguments some particular men make. It's just like, wow, you really, the Lord really has blocked your understanding. But the Heavenly Father will raise up a guy like that and have, all right, a lot of people listening to that guy and really think that they're hearing the truth of the Bible. But that's how the, the, the Lord operates. He'll raise up a false prophet to catch particular men he don't want up. And let's prove that. It says, he answered and said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, which the kingdom of heaven starts with his gospel, the truth. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath it shall be given, and he shall have more abundant. But whosoever hath not, from him shall it be taken away, even that he hath. And we're seeing that in this time. Men who, who, who had, you know, uh, the truth or what seemed to, you know, that they had the truth, but eventually the Lord took it away from them. You had men who, you know, when they were in the camp, you know, they weren't fervent. They were lukewarm, you know, but then they get offended and they use that offense. All right. To become demons. Now they're on fire. Thinking that they're still in the truth. You see. <laughs> that's the, the that's these guys right here it says therefore speak i unto them in parables because they seeing see not in hearing they hear not neither do they understand carnal men all right it says and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of isaiah which is in the book of isaiah the sixth chapter which said by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand and by seeing you shall see and not perceive all right. And it's not mingled with faith when they heard the word. All right. It says for this people's heart or mind is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed. Let's say at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See, so there's a lot of people who the Lord don't want to be converted. So what does he do? He blinds their 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 minds all right he makes them dull of hearing okay there's there's angels responsible with blocking the truth from them okay <laughs> and they get consumed by either offense all right the mindset of this world or whatever it may be and they're through but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things what ye see, okay, his true followers he's speaking to, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them, okay? And once they see they can't get it, they turn in, you know, they pretty much turn into the spirit of Saul, okay? It says here, let's go back. Second Corinthians four and four start at three. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. When we say Yahweh is only coming to deliver the elect, they say, well, no, nah, man, you know, you know, he's coming to save the whole world. You even got particular Israelites that hold to this understanding that. You know, heathen could be entered into the second covenant, actual heathen, Moabites, Canaanites, which prophecy says otherwise. OK, so the God of this world have blinded the minds of many Israelites, lest the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who was the image of the most high, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for Yahweh's sake. 
So we're not here to preach ourselves, you know, boast in ourselves, make ourselves some celebrities. We're here to bring you the simplicity in Hamashiach Yahawashai and taking up the form of, of the role of a servant. This is the NLT. It says, you see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Yahweh Shai is Lord and we ourselves are your servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. That's exactly what we do. All right. And this is what Apostle Paul did. So let's read it again. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, the Lord and ourselves your servants for Yahweh Shai's sake. We're here to serve. Okay. Going out on the highways and the byways, doing these videos, making our bodies a living sacrifice is a form of serving. For the Most High who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts, which we know the Hebrew word for heart is mind, lab. Okay. So the Most High, all right, commanded, see, he commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our minds to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the Most High in the face of Yahweh Shai. So he's opened up the understanding, you know, via the Holy Spirit. Okay, and the Holy Spirit comes through Yahweh Shai. He sent the light into our minds, all right, so that we can partake of this glorious gospel, all right, and either preach or receive what is being preached okay it says but we have this treasure in earthen vessels okay we have this treasure in earthen vessels now before we woke up to this truth we were in darkness but the most high having handpicked the elect from the foundation of the earth had a set time where the light would be shined into our minds okay and we will receive the knowledge Okay, of the glory of the Most High, but through the face of Yahweh Shai. You see, but we have this treasure because it is a treasure. Wisdom is the true riches. All right, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, meaning we receive this glorious gospel while we're in this defiled flesh. That the excellency of the power may be of the Most High and not of us now. Let's get the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. First Corinthians, the first chapter. That's how the Heavenly Father wants it. Okay, which, as I always say, the way the prophets and apostles look, the way we come, is a test to Israel's integrity. So the one who's receiving the message is receiving it by the power of the word and not by a gimmick. OK, those of you who can receive, you know, uh, the truth for what it is outside of a gimmick or something that makes you feel good or something that tells you what you want to hear. OK, uh, you've received the word via the power of the word. And that's more that that's a true believer, those who believe wholeheartedly through the power of the word only and not through a gimmick or, you know, some sort of uh situation that is appeasing to this world that plays on your flesh and your emotions no you've received the gospel simply because of the word okay this is the book of first corinthians the first chapter let's see here and uh, the wisdom of god let's start at 18 and jump around it says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Preaching Yahweh Shah is foolishness. The simplicity of Yahweh Shah, the cross, you know, uh, 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 the duty of a prophet, you know, apostle, you know, the making yourself a servant, you know, doing this work with a single mind, you know, not adding a world, you know, to this gospel. That's foolishness unto people. You know, being obedient unto death. What Yahweh Shai really came and did. That's boring to people. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Most High. See? Now, 
I'm going to jump down to verse 25. It says, because the foolishness of God, what people think is foolish, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God, which we come, all right, you know, in, a, in, a, in, in what you would say in a weak visage. As a matter of fact, what does it say in the very next chapter? Let's see if we can pull that up. Where it talks about Paul. Let's see here. Or get this in the NLT. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of the Most High. We just came preaching the word. Okay? Certain brothers are more, you know, well spoken than others, but overall. We just come as we are. It's just, the, you know, the, the not in the sense that we didn't repent and turn our lives around to the best of our ability, but we, we're just here. We all got on different garments. It's not a situation where, you know, it's this uniform, you know, marching around, chanting. You know, it's just we're preaching the word, man. Okay? For I determined not to know anything among you save Yahweh Shai and him crucified. And that's what we're to be preaching, man. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. OK, now there's a scripture that talks about his bodily. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Let's see here. It talked about how Paul's, his, you know, his bodily presence was weak. Okay, this is, uh, yep, 2 Corinthians 10 and 10. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech is contemptible. <laughs> Let's get that in the NLT. Okay, it says... For some say Paul's letters are demanding and forceful, but in person he is weak and his speeches are worthless. All right. Meaning, you know, his, you know, the letters, the, the you know, and in this time we have videos, they're powerful. All right. But when you when you see us, we're just regular men. You see, and Israel loves a show. So the way that the prophets come is a test to Israel's integrity. To see if you really, really, really are a believer, okay, you're gonna you're gonna take hold to the power of the words that the men of the Lord are speaking. To hell with how they look, you know, how rough around the edges they may be, which that is a test to Israel. See? First Corinthians one and twenty six, for see your calling, brethren, how not that many wise men after the flesh, not many uh, mighty not many noble are called, all right? And some of us went to college. Some of us, are, you know, what you would call educated within Esau's system. But, the Lord, hey, the, you know, that's far and few between. You know, really the Lord is just dealing with regular, you know, brothers, man, from different walks of life. We all have our different walk. Don't get it twisted, all right? But the Lord didn't call the, 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 the wise and scholarly of this world. No, he took the lowly from amongst our people and gave them the truth okay those who are rich in faith but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise see and the foolish things of the world the the downtrodden the weak you know the uh, boring the you know uh the not so flashy that's what the lord wants to confound okay the wise God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. OK, the things that, you know, Israel despises is the, the prophets. The most high chose them. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. So the Lord don't want people to see his true prophets, 
you know, and the, the masses of the people are oohed and odd and like, wow, this is great. No, he wants the, the, the true prophets to look foolish. He doesn't want, <laughs> you know, he doesn't want people to boast in his presence. Okay? That ain't, that ain't what he wants. He doesn't want people to see the, the, the prophets and be like, wow. See? And when you look up this word, foolish things, all right? That word foolish is, let's see here, moros, foolish, impious, godless. That's how the world looks at us. But on a deeper sense, musterion, which is mystery. Hidden things, secret, mystery, general mysteries, religious secrets confide only to the initiated and not to ordinary mortals. See, you got ordinary Israelites and then you have those of the household of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. OK, and to them are given the, the, the general, the mysteries, the secrets, you know, a secret purpose or counsel. Okay, a secret thing not obvious to the understanding. Okay. <laughs> so he revealed his secrets unto the servants, the prophets, man. Okay, so let's go back to the book of Second Corinthians four and seven. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This treasure the treasure is this word. Okay? That is the true treasure. See, but we've received it while in these decrepit bodies that the excellency of the power may be of the most high and not of us. There you go. OK, because if we were down here preaching in, you know, our angelic bodies, you know, everybody would be listening. The scripture said my thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. But what the Lord did was send the prophets lowly. OK, rough around the edges. OK. And. Gave them the truth and sent them to preach the word, man. And those who have ears to hear and eyes to see will repent, okay, and be converted. The rest will be left on the outside. And that's just how the Lord operates. We are troubled on every side. So with receiving this gospel and going out and preaching comes trouble. We are troubled on every side. We, we catch hell, you know, uh, from the Christians, from our own people. You know, from other Israelites. All right. The true church of Yahweh Bashim Shai was always downtrodden and hated. All right. And always caught all kinds of hell. See, we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. OK, so, yeah, we, we every every time we look up, there's something. But we're not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair, okay? So the Lord, you know, puts us through, you know, these, uh, because we have a purification by fire, okay? And those trials are needed. So the Lord gives us just enough not to destroy us, but to make us stronger for the walk that we have because things are only going to get harder and tighter, OK, persecuted, but not forsaken. The Lord is still with us. OK, we have all of these different titles that, you know, other Israelites in their anger will put on us. OK, you got men, you know, coming to where brothers preach. You know, uh, you know so say taking over their spots. OK. Slandered. See, the, the, the that's what Paul and them went through. OK, especially when they went around Jerusalem. OK, those of the circumcision gave them hell. See, Paul called them Satan. <laughs> Persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Cast down is, you know, in a sense, you know, talk bad about. And that's something you got to get used to. If you're going to be out preaching this word, you have to have thick skin. OK. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord. You see? That the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our body. So when you look at what was uh, 
what what befell Yahweh Shai, hated, lied on, you know, talked about, called the devil, called Beelzebub for doing, you know, what was right. All right. The true church of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has to, you know, go through the same thing. You're looking at how Yahweh Shai was treated. All right. By uh, uh, looking at what's happening with his church. OK, let's read this in the NLT. It says. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of of Yahweh Shai so the life of Yahweh Shai may be seen in our bodies so the hell we catch the ridicule we receive is only a result of being a follower of Yahweh Shai as he himself went through these very same things so when we go through these things we get mad we get angry it makes you want to get carnal all right but we have to understand and use Yahweh Shai as an example it has to be this way. It says, for we which live, all right, who are here doing this work, out preaching, you know, making our bodies a living sacrifice, are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's uh, sake. As the scriptures say, we're, we're like a lamb brought to the slaughter, man. Okay? And that's just the way it's supposed to be. Okay? We ain't telling the most high, nah, I didn't sign up for this. Nah, this, that's too much. No, we're delivered unto death. The scriptures say the most high have set forth the apostles last. Okay, let's get that real quick. As it were unto death. First Corinthians four. And nine, it says, for I think that God have set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. And when you go into this, the custom of, um, you know, when they were feeding, you know, Christians to lions, you know, they would have these gladiator games and they would bring, you know, the followers of Yahweh Shai out last that was like the grand finale okay well that's how it is for us you know in this world as a matter of fact what i'll do is um see if i can get a commentary on this because i remember um let's see here matthew henry is usually pretty good but he'd be too long um no, 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 not him. Well, let's see if he brings it up. Yep. Uh, set forth, I think. Set forth the apostles. Apostles in a broader sense. Of the word. As it were appointed and the criminals condemned to die. Made a spectacle, literally in a theatrical spectacle. And made a gazing stock by reproaches and afflictions. And, and, and people, you know, complete assholes, complete losers have the, you know, the uh, comfort to just, you know, click on a video of somebody talking crazy and laughing, bring it out and talking all of it, you know. You were out there on the highways and the byways, but pretty much, like I said, to make a spectacle, you know, made gazing stock by reproaches, afflictions, criminals contemned to die. And Paul time and Paul's times were exhibited as a gazing stock to amuse the populace in the amphitheater. Amphitheater. They were set forth last in the show. All right. To fight with wild beasts. This explains the imagery of Paul here. See that? So, <laughs> there you go. I don't even have to go to no other commentary. He he broke it down right there. All right? the the, the, the It's like the Most High have set forth the apostles last as they were appointed to death. For we have made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. 
We are fools for Yahweh Shai's sake, but ye are wise. Okay? We are weak, but ye are strong. All right? Uh, ye are honorable, but we are despised. And this is speaking to you who are, you know, um, listening and watching these videos. You're being built up in the strength of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. But for us, you know, starting with our apostles and elders and, the, you know, the bishops and the men who came before them. Okay? They take the brunt. Of the uh, ridicule and the hell, man. And they do a good job of not letting it bother them. See, we, you know, us coming in, you know, we still let certain things get to us. It's like certain things just roll off of the apostles' shoulders, you see. But even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Meaning nobody accepts the prophets. See? And labor, working with our own hands. We, we do work, you know, although we're called bums and this and that. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it for the truth's sake. And that is the, 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 the true thing that they hate, all right, is Yahweh Shai. All right. When you really use the word, the word cuts. So it makes it offends Jake. So it leads to you being in defamed, persecuted. All right. And as it says here, we are made as the filth of the world and the offscurring of all things unto these day. All right. Until this day, we this is what the true church of Yahweh Shai is going to be looked at as. All right. And if you're watching and listening, you can't allow that to throw off your judgment. That's how the true church is supposed to be looked at. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. <laughs> so we were warned. OK, Paul, the, you know, Paul, man, he, he laid he laid it down. Yahweh, of course, the disciples, you know, but Paul, man, when you look at his his ministry and read his letters, Okay, he he was talking to us, man, preparing us for this very day. But the Lord is getting ready to work a work. He knows our disadvantages in this world. Okay, so let's go back to Second Corinthians four and eleven. For we which are which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake. That the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So, the, <clears throat> so then death worketh in us, but life in you. So we have to catch hell so that the body can get the word and live. And that's all right. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And people don't like what's being spoken. They have a problem with the 100% truth. And Yahweh Shai had to go through the same thing. But as you can see what it said in verse 11. All right. We're delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So the stripes he received, we receive those same stripes. But in spirit, the hell he caught, we receive the same hell. But in, in this day and age. Our own people coming up against us, casting our name out for evil, doing whatever they can to, to, to have us delivered up to the we have to go through that. It is not the easiest thing to endure, but when you apply this aspect of it that, you know, it's it, it comes with the territory of teaching the truth, all right, then it makes, you know, pretty much everything easier. So death worketh in us. As we're offered up as lamb to the slaughter, but life in you. This sacrifice, just like Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, led to life. Okay? And in these latter days, we're walking, you know, in the stead of the apostles, the prophets, the disciples, built upon that foundation, you know. So we're going through the same thing, but the church is being built up. As it says in uh, Second uh, or Ephesians, the fourth chapter. You know, he gave every man a gift according to the measure that is given unto them. Some he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, 
teachers and so forth for the what for the uh, building up of the the elect the church see that we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written all right i believed and therefore i've spoken we also believe and therefore speak you know we're speaking the word and the word is as a two-edged sword the word is a uh, discerner of the thoughts it makes manifest who's who and what's what it brings out the truth of what a person is it says knowing that he which raised up Yahweh Shah Hamashiach shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai and shall present us with you all right and that's the hope that we all be ultimately you know uh brought into our you know heavenly estate and with Yahweh Shai all of us together man for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many re, uh, redound to the glory of God. All right. And we are, are and we are under a grace period, man. OK, contrary to popular belief, we're under grace. By grace, are you saved through faith? OK. And this is what the teaching of the word was to do, build up the church so that ultimately we can offer up the right sacrifice to be justified by faith, man. OK, we're not going to need faith under the new covenant. OK, faith. OK, it was made for this grace period to be justified. You know, and offer up the works of righteousness, man. To make our calling and election sure. Okay. Because the elect were chosen from the foundation of the earth. But those who are going to be on earth in these latter days. The Lord has given them what? The earnest of the spirit. So that they can understand what is to come. Preach, prophesy, pray, repent. You know, change their mind. Okay. The, 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 that's a sign and a wonder, man. And that sacrifice is going up before the Most High, and he's getting ready to send his only begotten son back. For this cause, see, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. And that's what you do. The, the, the outward man is perishing. All right. But the inward man, which that's what the Lord is coming to deliver, is renewed day by day. All right. Building yourselves up, rebuking demons, getting stronger, becoming rooted in what you believe in. All right, because you should you should be asking yourself, am I really rooted? Do I really believe this? Am I wishy washy? Is my foundation off? OK. And then you make the necessary changes to become rooted, man. Pray, ask questions. You know, be honest. OK, because simple conversations can lead. All right. To uh, they, you, you'll be surprised at what communication amongst the body could do. But you have men who hold things in. OK, don't say nothing. And then, you know, when the Lord finally addresses who they are and they're cast away from the body. OK, then they want to be, you know, the, 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 the angriest nigga in the world with all of these issues and problems that they never talk to nobody about. OK. For our light affliction, which is before a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So this is a light affliction. Brothers and you few sisters, you know, because, you know, what we found out. Is that, you know, not only are the men of the Lord catching hell, I mean, we catch the brunt of the hell. Okay, start with our apostles and elders, the bishops, you know, going out on the highways, having to constantly, you know, do lessons, you know, feeling compelled to go out and just not you. It's like even when you feel weak, you still got to do it. Like before I turned this video on, like I, I felt like I had no spirit in me. Like I felt weak. I felt like I just want to lay down. But then you lay down and you can't sleep. You're just sitting there looking. 
looking at folly on the internet. Get your ass up, man. But this is a, this is a light affliction. And it's only going to be for a moment, man. The Lord is getting ready to to really end this for us, man. But the 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 result of the obedience and you know uh coming into this thing and putting on a new man and going through this hell that comes with being a follower of Yahweh Shah and teaching his truth. Look, there's a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See? And that's those new bodies. That's the second covenant. Okay? It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So we're not looking at, you know, um, what we see before us. Because as it says in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, you know, in the sight, as a matter of fact, let's get that. <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon. The uh, third chapter. But the souls of the righteous are in the hands of the most high. And there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise they seem to die. And their departure is taken from misery. And their going from us be utter destruction. But they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men. Yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been chastised. They shall be greatly rewarded for God proved them. And this is that proving point and found them worthy for himself as gold in the furnace. Have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And that's exactly what the elect men of the Lord are a burnt offering. Yahweh Shai was an offering. <laughs> See, a sacrifice, a lamb to the slaughter. We have that. We have to have that same mentality. Okay. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. The hell, the, the ridicule, you know, the uh, the uh, the flesh, you know, ailments, demons messing with you. That's all temporal. Because we had to be tried by the fire. OK. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So all of this is temporal. Remember, we're just pilgrims passing through on our way to a holy place. All right. But we understand that we're not doing this for no reason. There's a reward tied to it. OK. And hopefully, you know, uh, through the Holy Spirit, y'all are edified. I'm going to go ahead and end it. This concludes Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Shalom.